Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Camila, and you are watching Camila's Yoga. Hey, welcome, and thank you for tuning in. So if you are here watching this video, you may be a brand new yoga teacher, or maybe you did your teacher training right before COVID, and now you're wondering, things are opening up again and I don't know what to do. Well, I've got the answers for you, or at least some tips that might help you move in the right direction. If you are wondering whether or not you should take a teacher training, my answer is a big short fat yes. Because if you are thinking about it, that means that you have a place at the teacher training, but that is a question for a whole other video. So let us dive right into it. My very first tip for brand new yoga teachers is practice teaching as much as you can. Practice teaching as much as you can. Take the classes that you can to get the experience that you need. So when you practice teaching, that's where you're gonna make the mistakes. That's when you're gonna learn how to fix those mistakes and how you gotta deal with different situations that you will encounter as a teacher. You will not figure all of that out while you prep or plan for a class or while you imagine it in your head. It can only happen when you actually teach. So teach as much as you can. That means you can contact a gym or a yoga studio or a business. Businesses do yoga classes as well nowadays. And you can say, hey, I, I'm a new yoga teacher. Even let me just sub in. Okay, that you take another teacher's class if they aren't there. So teach as much as you can. That's my tip number one. Tip number two, be a student. All right, so now I've told you to be a student of a teacher. You're a teacher student, a teaching student, but now I want to tell you be a yoga student. Don't forget to go to classes. Don't forget to attend workshops. Don't forget to have your own personal practice because that's going to be your very best teacher in learning how to make a class, learning how to speak, learning how to put together flows and sequences and just get that experience. So do not forget to be a yoga student as a teacher. So be a student, take as many class classes to as in workshops as you can as a yoga student because it will help you, I promise. Tip number three. Beginners are not necessarily the easiest ones to teach. Let that sink in for a moment. Beginner classes are not necessarily the easiest classes to teach. This is a rookie mistake. A lot of new teachers think, that, okay, well, I'm a beginner and they're a beginner, so that might be a good idea. But a beginner who's come to yoga for the very first time or have very little experience, their hands or feet are going to be all over the place. And as a new yoga teacher, that can be very overwhelming. So my suggestion is to find, if you have the privilege, you find a class with people that are still new a little bit, but they have done it before. Maybe they've done one or two semesters before. Maybe they've got about six months of practice under them, under their skin. So brand new people to yoga are not necessarily the easiest one to teach. Tip number four. I would recommend avoiding classes for all levels. A lot of gyms and some studios have it written, this is intended for beginners or this is intended for this and this level, but all levels are welcome. Now, I understand why they do that in terms of a business thing, although I can see how that's not really working as well. But try to avoid those classes, especially in some gyms where it's just like you can sign up and you can come whenever. 
anybody can come because you will have people that are brand new beginners and you will have people that are super advanced and everything in between. And it's hard to find that balance and figure out where you are going to teach and how you are going to teach that. So I would recommend if you have the privilege to have a class where you say, this is the people I'm going to teach. This is the focus area of the class and anyone interested, they should sign up for this particular class. That would be the best setup for a brand new yoga teacher. And for the love of everything, don't say all levels welcome because you are shooting yourself in the foot. I promise you that. That will come later. Tip number five, come prepare, but expect Back to the unexpected. Okay. This is a two-edged sword. Some people will prefer to, or some teachers will prefer to prep the class. They write it down. They bring their notebook into class. In the beginning, this may be you. So come prepared. Have an idea of what you are going to do in that class in mind. But expect for that plans to just whoosh, go off the rails because you may need more time explaining something you may things may go faster than you expect to so be prepared but also be prepared for the unexpected to happen how can you do this okay let's say we can divide a class up into five pieces five flows five sections well, maybe you prepare six. You may not use number six. Number six may come in as a number four or a number three, but you don't necessarily use it. You use it if you have to. You use it if the time is, things are going faster. You use it if you need to. That is one way to come prepared for the unexpected. Huh? So be prepared for the unexpected to happen. And if you finish five minutes over or five minutes before, it's okay. You're new, give yourself permission to be new. Tip number six, use the child's pose. If you're lost, if you forget your flow, if you forget where you were going, just put them into child's pose. They cannot see you. Tell them to close their eyes. You have a breather, you think about it, and you remember, and you bring them back out. Use child's pose for what it's worth because your students may love you for it and you're going to love yourself for it. So use child's pose for all that it's worth because it's a tool for yoga teachers to just get their head around what is happening when their mind and their tongue is just not collaborating. So use child's pose for all it's worth. Tip number seven, all yoga students are not supposed to be your yoga students. And some people are going to come to your class and they're going to never return. And that's okay. It happens to all of us. Yeah? It's just like you may not be friends with everyone. You may not be, you know, want to have everybody in your space. It just, it's a connection thing. It's a connection thing. It's nothing personal. Other people are going to love your classes and they're going to prefer your classes over other people's classes. So give yourself permission to be who you are and have the class style and teach a style that is works for you and just know that it's not going to work for everyone and that is absolutely Fine. It is supposed to be that way and you are doing nothing wrong if it happens to you. Number eight, allow the music to work with you, not against you. So in the beginning, I would recommend you find as soft music as possible, maybe without any lyrics, um, that is not going to take up a lot of space. Because you are learning and you don't want that music to tramp all over you. Yeah? So 
find a playlist or create a playlist that's working with you and against you and if you're in a class if you have made your playlist you're teaching class and you just notice one song you're like man i cannot deal with this song you take a mental note you remove it for the next class and you can do several songs several times in one class people are not going to know <laughs> okay so you can have the same songs three times in your playlist they're not gonna know. They're not gonna know. Okay? So let the music be with you, not against you. So start soft, gentle, kind, easy music, and then work your way from there. You may like an acoustic version of some pop song, but it's probably not gonna work in your class because it will perhaps, most likely, take over that space that you need as a new teacher. Allow the music to create an ambiance, a feeling, a, an energy in the room, but, but don't let it take up too much space because that space is yours, yeah? Not the music's. Number nine, trust your intuition, trust your knowledge, and accept and admit when you don't know. This goes for all teachers. This is also about if somebody asks you a question or in the beginning of the class or after the class they say, oh hey, I've got this pain. And you are thinking, well, I got no idea about that. I've never heard of that before. I don't know. You, you, don't, you don't pretend. You don't, you, don't, you don't work so hard in your mind to come up with a solution. Instead, you can say, oh, oh, um, well, do you know what? Listen to your body for this class and just adjust anywhere you need. If you need adjustments and you're not doing the same, I will come over and I will see if I can find an alternative with you. Otherwise, I will ask my teacher and then I will get back to you next time. What you do between then and next time is you go and you ask a more experienced yogi or yoga teacher that may know a suggestion for that particular client of yours or customer of yours. Okay, so admit when you don't know and just trust what you do know, okay? Your gut, your intuition is right, okay? So if you planned on holding warrior three, three times during that class, but every voice inside your head is saying no more warrior three, no more warrior three, no more warrior three, well, you skip the next warrior three because your intuition knows what she or he is doing, okay? What you are experiencing in that moment is that you are sensing the room, you are reading the room, and you are adapting and changing, okay? Now, if that freaks you out too much, and if you're like, well, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, well, you stick to your plan, and then you let your experience teach you that you will come up with flows on the spot, next time that happens uh, but trust your intuition because he or she is probably right and trust your knowledge and admit when you don't know and then seek somebody who do know your teacher your colleague who have more experience than you and allow yourself to grow as a teacher that way last one tip number 10 is super important it's be yourself and find your style of teaching Okay, be yourself, and this goes along with some of the other ones we've talked about, that not every student is your student, okay? I have gone to some of the most incredible yoga teachers, well-renowned, uh, really educated, really skilled, really, and they just weren't my teacher, just didn't click for me didn't click and then other people have been you know in a different situation i've been like that's my teacher they've got something to teach me it's just energy it's just communication between humans and not everybody's are our people okay so it's the same for you find your style of teaching and trust who you are and the students that are attracted to you they were going to come to you so trust that trust that within you because it's important. It's um, it will take it will it will make you it will take you from being a good teacher to a great teacher a lot quicker if you trust that process. So be yourself, and 
explore, develop, and expand your personal teaching style because it will work benefits. It will work wonders for you. I promise. Thank you so much for watching. That was my top 10 tips for brand new yoga teachers. And before you go, I got a bonus one for you. This is more of a business style of teaching because at the end of the day, if you want to do yoga or be a teacher for a living, well, you're going to have to earn money to be able to pay your bills. Yeah and to live that life that you want. My suggestion for you in that regard is find a niche. Within yoga, find something that you can spend more time getting really good at. Because that way it will be easier for both you and the customer navigating. Okay, imagine being a yoga student. You want to try yoga and they're just a gazillion yoga teachers, studios, classes out there. That student may want something specific and then they're going to find that specific and that specific is you, okay? For me, that has been kids yoga. Kids yoga is my niche. It is what I spend a lot of time both teaching, studying, getting good at, couldn't attend classes. It's just not something you can do <laughs> with kids yoga. It's a little bit of a downside. But I, mine was kids yoga and then I moved into flexibility and mobility training and I worked my way into getting really good at working with athletes that do other sports and activities and implementing yoga into their training. So once your experience as a teacher is growing, that niche, those niches, they are going to expand. They're going to, they're going to, you're going to create more lines for yourself, more lanes for yourself. But in the beginning, find a niche that you can get really good at. Uh, because my experience is that that is going to help you um, more easily um, live off of it as a yoga teacher, more business-wise, more financial kind of aspect of being a yoga teacher. So that is my tip for you. And as you grow and develop, as I said, it's, uh, you will create more lanes, more niches for yourself. I don't know even if niches in plural is a word in English, but it is now. <laughs> so that is my, my tip for you um, to explore as a little bonus. <laughs> And when that's been said, again, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel because it helps me. And man, we can connect more. Let us do that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and leave a comment below. Maybe you are a new teacher and you found one of them really helpful and one of them are like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Let me know below because I do want to know if this was helpful or not to you. And maybe if you have an idea for a niche, then let me know below and if you want tip tips for it also let me know in the comments below and i will respond to you for sure and if you want to learn more about kids yoga and you can read and understand norwegian i recommend you going to this website link in the bio it's where we sell our yoga mats that i make i make uh, rain covers for yoga mats i have my own kids yoga teacher training here in oslo in october if it's still october 2021 when you're watching this video so click that link and let's see what we can connect with over there otherwise have a great day and thank you for watching i will